um okay now um there's a time that i visited my mom and um she had planted a lot of um traditional vegetables um namely amaranth um what is it called night uh, african nightshade which we eat as vegetables also cowpeas leaves um just a variety of uh, vegetables and uh, she had a surplus uh, to the extent that uh, she had to store some of the vegetables and uh, this is what uh, she told me that um, is a, a process of storing vegetables you know she was drying them and uh, the key to drying vegetables is first of all uh, the drying is not uh, to be done in direct sunlight you uh, take um, a wide cloth or uh, or a mat and spread them wide they should not be on top of each other spread them wide um, uh, to the effect that every leaf is almost not touching each other in the shade. Uh, this is what our forefathers used to do to uh, to vegetables so that they could store because uh, some things are not uh, produced uh, 365 days in a year or sometimes there may be droughts or you just have a surplus and you do not want to waste your food or you, you're just storing. Um, I've tried it with uh, I've tried it with uh, amaranth, and also for uh, vegetables that have wider leaves and uh, they are more uh, juicy. Like for example, cabbage. If you want to store cabbage, uh, what you do is um, cut it into uh, into slices. Uh, I don't know if whole cabbage will do it, but this is what I did. You cut it into um, into uh, slices and then you spread them out over a wide mat in a uh, inside a room that you're not using or in a shed. Just make sure that it's not direct sunlight. Now, the process of drying for the leafy 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 vegetables will take about two to three weeks. And uh, for cabbage, uh, at the end of that time, uh, it will have attained a brownish color, which uh, turns back to the its normal color when you put uh, in water. For uh, other green leafy uh, vegetables that are green naturally, the new color will be brownish also. I remember going to visit my grandmother as a child and she had uh, on uh, in, inside her kitchen there was a rack that was um, about uh, three meters high over the over the smoky kitchen and that's where she was putting her grains so this is how you store grains first of all uh, putting them there would uh, dry them extra extra dry them um, the drying that uh, would have been done by the sun and also for seeds it will give an extra coating of soot, which will protect um, the seeds from uh, from uh, being attacked by uh, by disease. So uh, it's important to uh, to start learning to do things how they were done before electricity. And um, if you are preparing uh, for any eventuality or any um, hitting the fan kind of uh, situation. It's important not to count on uh, the freezers. I've seen people buy in bulk and put uh, products in the freezers. But it's, it's important to know that um, meat can be dried. Uh, the ancient people used to store meat for months by drying. The same, um, the same process that is used to dry grains which is uh, putting it over a fire. The same process uh, is still in use in fishing communities in places like um, 
most places in Africa basically, fish is dried until it becomes so hard it feels like a, like a rock. You can't bend it without breaking. So that's uh, that's very important that we do not forget it because um, we're not assured of electricity in the next uh, few years to come with the ramping up of um, solar activity, the ramping up of a lot of things are coming to fruition uh, very soon and there. Let's not be shocked uh, to the extent uh, that we are not able to uh, to cope because we've forgotten very uh, simple and very cheap ways of uh, preservation of food without technology. It's, it's important. If you can freeze dry things right now, do it. And I find it more, um, I prefer drying to things like, uh, things like canning. First of all, because canning is not something that uh, is sustainable without uh, the commercialized life that you currently live in. Although it's very important, especially for Western countries uh, who for years have gone through the winter and have planned. I think the winter was a preparatory uh, season that has helped them to live without uh, productivity for a period of three, four months and to learn to adopt to different uh, different seasons. So I think uh, the winter has been a period of learning. Probably the most, uh, the people with the highest survivability are in the polar region right now, like the uh, living in uh, 70 degrees uh, kind of temperature, like in northern Russia, the people living in, um, in the North Pole, very close to the North Pole, and they see the sun for only one month, then they have uh, around four months of darkness or around four months of of light. You know, these are people who can really survive now. In places like Africa, this has not been the case. We used to sun and weather that uh, is interrupted, yes, but very minimally interrupted. Now, events like uh, magnetic uh, events can shift uh, weather in unpredictable ways. So it's it's it's, uh, it's very important for the next few uh, for the next few months for this harvest that we are preparing for in this season. Let's not uh, let it go to waste. Let's dry as much as we can, and I'm emphasizing on drying because we are counting on electricity too much. We need to reduce our dependence on electricity. We need to reduce our dependence on machinery. We need to reduce our dependence, our dependence on um, on manufactured implements that um, we depend on for preparation and storage of food. For example, canners, canning. Um, the bottles, the, there's a time there's already a shortage of leads and a shortage of bottles. So you see, um, canning um, is working right now and continues to work for most of the people, but in extreme situations, you may need to also learn other methods. And also remember that um, dried foods lose weight, lose a lot of weight, while canning may add water and you add some fragility to the um, to the con uh, in regards to the kinds of containers that um, are being used. So it's important to can yes, but there's a time that you will not be able to can, but you will be you will never uh, have a time that you cannot dry because first of all you don't need the sun. You dry in the shade for the leafy vegetables for the heavy things like grains and grains and meat. You may need the sun in addition to um, heat, which is what uh, most uh, fishing communities do in, um, in Africa. So uh, please uh, 
let's prepare whether the population in a few years will be um, as as much as we are now or maybe we'll be or uh, will be less either way the people who survive will need to learn to depend on themselves and remember the world is currently in a situation with regards to the the two countries the that are currently on each other so the implications for any uh, any conflict is that uh, the factories that were used to supplying us with fertilizer the factories that have been supplying us with seeds the factories that have been supplying us with medicine are the same factories that have been supplying gunpowder that need to convert from production of uh, machinery to production of implements of um, conflict. So there's going to be a shortage also uh, in that area. And it's important to recognize the, uh, the sensitivity of the situation right now.